Welcome to the U World Order Showcase Podcast. Your host, Jill Hart, the coach's alchemist. Couldn't be more excited to have you join us today. On this podcast, we celebrate the champions of change, the up and coming life, health and transformational coaches who are fearlessly stepping forward to make a difference in the world. Get ready for inspiring stories, practical tips, and powerful moments that will motivate you to make a positive change in your life and those around you. We're happy to have you join us on this incredible journey as we dive into the world of life, health, and transformational coaches who are lighting up the path towards a better tomorrow. Maybe we're getting stuck out there. Hi, and welcome to the U World Order Showcase podcast. Today, we are speaking with Safriana Luna. She is the queer spirit guy. <laughs> she helps people who feel different learn to love themselves. Welcome, Safriana. I'm really looking forward to this conversation. I love your background, the moons and stars and butterfly or a moth it's technically a moth it's a luna moth which makes sense with me being safriana luna and my brand being living luna but that's a whole other story thank you so much jill it is an honor to be here and i just love the mission that you have this idea of the you world order is so important because we need to love ourselves first and foremost we do. We do. And in loving ourselves, I really feel like we're loving others. We're more able to, to share what we're gifted with to help other people. And really, that's what it's all about, the connections that we make. Absolutely. So tell us your story and what you're doing. Yeah. So it was early this year, 2023, that I adopted my moniker that you shared, the Queer Spirit Guide. And that was really the start of a new chapter for me. I come from two decade long careers. Uh, I was an English teacher and a life skills teacher in middle schools in the public school system. And then I became a trauma therapist. And it was this year I decided I can't do any of that anymore. That is not for me. And I was in a meeting with a marketing coach and we were just kind of dreaming up. It was a group meeting and we were all dreaming up our 2023 and somehow this name, the queer spirit guide became mine during that meeting. It's a little fuzzy if I'm perfectly honest, but I sat with, what does that mean? What does this mean about who I am and who I'm becoming in the world? And it meant accepting the mantle of not being a therapist, not being a teacher, not being a prescripted role that says this is exactly how you must do this, but to completely mm -hmm. break free of all of that structure and make something that was my own. That was really what it meant. And the word queer, you know, there's so much history with the word, word queer, but ultimately it means different. And we are all different. <laughs> every single one of us is different from we are all other. queer we're all queer <laughs> yep i said it you said it we're, right even if you're not queer in in the way that i use queer for the the lgbtq umbrella right we're all a little queer we're all a little different there's something about us that doesn't match the person next to us and that's just how we are naturally right we're one human species one planet but we're all individuals and we need to learn to love ourselves as the unique individual that we are in order to make the biggest impact we can in the world. So I became the Queer Spirit Guide to begin guiding people to that authentic self-love in a way where I could also bring the fullness of who I am, right? In the careers that I had before, there was this not so fun phenomena where it's like you are just that career. You don't exist outside of the classroom or outside of the therapy room. You are just that for the people that you're working with. And I realized I had this deep moment of self-love a few years ago. I literally fell in love with myself. And after that was just this layers and layers coming back of, well, the more I love myself and the more I be me in the world, the more I actually help other people. So 
I needed to break free and get into this coaching space more the guiding and mentoring in order to fully bring all of those gifts forward. I love that you're a spirit guide because it speaks to me that you're guiding spirits, not this fleshy body thing that our spirits yeah. inhabit. Yeah. And it's not like when I first saw it, I, I was thinking, hmm, I wonder how she does it. I wonder if she's like talking to, I wonder if she actually has a queer spirit guy that she's re laying, relying on. <laughs> that was actually the first thought that I had. And then um, I started thinking about it a little more. And and as you're explaining it, it, it makes perfect sense to me um, that you would guide spirits and that they're unique spirits every spirit is unique and yes. therefore queer so I, I just I love that yeah <laughs> and and yeah it's it's so interesting the layers like words are so impactful for us humans right because that's how what we use to kind of relate with one another and yeah being a spirit guide myself embodied here in a body it is about connecting with the energy of the person that's across from me, or, you know, I, I do a lot of work online and that's one of my superpowers is that I can literally hold space for you wherever you are in the world. I could technically hold space for you if you were on the other side of the universe. Like that is what I do. And so I'm connecting with the energy of the person to help them understand, right? We chose to be in these human bodies for a reason. Uh, we have a unique mission that we all came here to uncover and to embrace. And we have these human experiences that can get in the way, right? They traumatize us. They reshape us. They mold us. We think that we can't go back, all of this. And I help, uh, you know, help individuals to kind of tease that out and, and get to the root of the spirit being underneath the essence of who they truly are. You know, I refer to it with the, as the capital S self. We are uncovering the self, the true, like the higher self or the observer or your uh, your inner God, even if you're willing to be so bold, right? I know some people are like, oh gosh, I can't accept that maybe I am God too, but that's what I'm ultimately helping us all to. I think we're totally part of them. Exactly. Yeah. Whatever this universal force source is, like I see us all as a cell in the same body, right? But each cell is important to the health of the body. And so each individual unique cell, each little spark of spirit or soul or whatever you want to call it needs its own attention, its own nurturing, its own validation of nature underneath. Um, I've really been on a quest to understand nature versus nurture you know I went into public schools I went into being a therapist and I really got to the core root of everything which is that anything that disrupts us and knocks us off of our blueprint or who we truly are is trauma right it everything rolls back to trauma all of our fear all of our shame all of our disappointment it all rolls back to trauma and the medical model doesn't quite even support working with the disruption of the energy that's created the trauma it's instead of diagnosis it's well because of what you experienced you now have right this diagnostic code and we're going to treat you for a it. label a label right and and labels can be really useful sometimes to find like-minded community but when we're reducing somebody and treating them for a label it just doesn't feel right for me anymore because i see the energy the soul the being and the disruption in that that life force that spiritual force that allows them to live their best life it's just trauma that gets in the way yeah i think sometimes with the medical community they're they're so they're so wanting everybody to be vanilla that they don't have the ability to let somebody be a different flavor yes and support them in being that different flavor yes. they just want to like we're going to make your symptoms go away so that you're sick like everybody else instead of well and unique yes oh my gosh i'm so glad you put words to that because that is absolutely right i study this life-changing 
archetypal system that's actually based in the physiological human body. We have been studying the fact that there are actually nine different models of human bodies, that there are nine different centers of leadership in the human body, three in the head, three in the upper body, and three in the lower body. And this changes everything from how we use our eyes to what body language actually means to what medical conditions we're even more likely to pick up if we get out of alignment with our true nature. And society wants to erase us and make this sort of universal, what I call natural number zero. They just all want us to be the same. And we're not. We even mm -hmm. have this physiological information that there are nine different types of bodies and we don't match our parents unless we have more than eight siblings, which is a whole nother story. But everything that I've studied leads me back to the same thing. Like we're all unique. We're all different. And there is so much about the human experience that the medical community, that schools, that pretty much everything, every system out there does not acknowledge. Right. I work uh, well, and specialize a lot with LGBTQ and neurodivergent people. Mm -hmm. Differences that, again, society tries to blank out. If you can't make everybody the same, it's really hard to control them. Yes. It's it's like, you know, you heard cats because cats are all unique and they're not going to let you make them like the next one over. And they're going to do whatever they're going to do. You really can't train a cat so no. much. No. They train you. They'll let you know this is what this means. And I expect you to conform to me not the other way around. Yes. I have, I have six cats. I don't live with six cats, but I have six cats across my, my two households with my partners. And I am polyamorous for those of you who didn't get the full intro of me. Uh, I'm a polyam advocate as well. And yeah, like all six cats, very different. And they're like toddlers. And here's the thing. Most of us, by the time we've hit toddler age, we didn't get the parent that said like, oh, you know, like the cat. I can't really train the cat to do anything different. You can't really train a toddler to not do what a toddler's doing. And yet so many of us grew up with parents that just, no, you don't do that. No, you need to conform. No, stop doing that. With no explanation, with no orientation to maybe it was working for us. And maybe we were having a great time, but it wasn't what was right for our parent. But again, this sort of, there's only one right way to be in society, right? This is the answer. This is how you must do it and you must conform. That's literally like my whole platform now is being a beacon of hope and light for people to know that they don't have to be that way. And I'm so reaffirmed. I'm, I'm getting so much reassurance these days that I'm, I'm walking in that light because I, someone the other day walked up to me at a mind, body, spirit fair and they said, I've, I've been seeing what you've been posting on socials lately. And oh my gosh, what a breath of fresh air. Like, I'm just so glad you're living your life. I love seeing pictures of you with both of your partners, which, you know, these are people that would never dream of having more than one partner because they think they have to be whatever they've been. Uh, and they see me like radically doing it and just loving not shoving things in people's faces and being like polyamory is the only way to be, but just being like, hi, I'm Polly. And I love these two people and look at our cute thing we did today. And just by shining that light and showing like you can be different and you can still be happy. It's not that I don't face adversity. And I certainly talk about that publicly too. It's still showing up as who I really am and shining that light. So other people know they can too. And there are other people that are like you and there are, you know, there's no reason why it has to be one way or another. Exactly. It really can just be how it works for you and your relationships. And, and I love that you're not like, it has to be in everybody's face or everybody has to accept me the way I am. Half the time people aren't even accepting, you know, the, the vanilla flavors because there's like oh look there's a vanilla speck in there you're totally wrong yep like, yeah it's this trying to bring everyone back down to the same basic level and but that only applies 
to the marginalized. It does not apply to the rich and famous. It does not apply to people that have enough money to pay off whatever, right? It only applies to the people who are the ones that are sick and cannot get help, to the ones who have been marginalized from the moment they were born because they looked different, right? They had a different shade of skin or, you know, they just appeared a different way. Maybe they had a physical disability, like all of these things that we just dismiss people for. And it's not, it's not okay. It's not okay. It's not. When you were talking about the nine body types, you want to go into that a little more? That was really interesting. And that's the first time I've heard that. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's something that my mentors, uh, Susan and Martin, have been studying for about 20 years. And mm -hmm. this is information that has been reignited. Most people are familiar with the Enneagram. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. body of nine, Enneagram was based off of the same original information, but was taken and sort of twisted in such a way that you can take a personality quiz for it. And the problem with that is if I'm in a certain mood and I sit down and I take a personality quiz, I'm going to answer it different. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to get a different response. I don't even, I don't know anymore what I was in Enneagram. I know in the Myers-Briggs I've taken it and been, you know, more, more extroverted or more introverted or more intuitive or more feeling or more this or that. But with this system, we're actually looking at the human body. We are looking at the quality of the eyes. We're looking how the body is held and how the body moves. We're looking for where tone is held and where people react to physical movement or uh, pressure even. Mm -hmm. And we have uncovered that, and when, again, we, you could name them anything, but they do have some nice overlap with numerology. So we use numbers to describe the different nine types. And... Types one through four, we call them natural numbers. Natural numbers one through four really need eye contact to create and establish a connection. Mm -hmm. And the type of eye contact that all nine natural numbers have is different. But one through four, if you're not honoring them with eye contact, are going to feel really disconnected. Versus five through nine, who create connection more through experiences or shared experiences or tasks and may not need the eye contact. They might give the eye contact, but they don't necessarily need it to establish a connection. And just right there, we have some really important information. Oh, about 50% of people, give or take a little, um, are going to need deep eye contact to establish a connection, approximately 50% or not. And I know the numbers it's not like an even perfect breakdown. Mm -hmm. The most common natural number that's in the world right now is actually natural number one, which the center of leadership is under the chin. And when they make eye contact with someone vulnerably, which is their superpower, they tilt the chin up, their eyes go soft, and they honor the person in front of them. And there's this beautiful awe and wonder that comes in because they are literally having a connection to source or God or the universe or whatever you want to call it in a way that the other nine or the other eight natural numbers don't, don't have as a baseline. Now, what's cool, and I've been studying this information for about a year and a half now, and I've had the pleasure of actually going out uh, to meet Susan and Martin in person. They live in Montana, which is a hike. Mm -hmm. whole fun story there with me breaking free into my new role. But uh, they teach these workshops where you actually learn to activate the other numbers in your body. And there is this absolute, just incredible mind-blowing phenomena that happens. So I'm a natural number nine. Mm -hmm. I, my, my eye contact, I tend to look very blank-faced when I'm deeply listening. That's a feature of nine. Our faces are very soft around the jawline. Our eyes tend to be big um, and our shoulders go back. When we're looking around our vision, it's almost like there's a 2% blur filter on is the best way I can describe it. Like the world's just a little fuzzy because our eyes are super diffusive. We have great peripheral vision. When I activate natural number one and I actually get it in my body properly, my vision goes right here, right in front of me the crispness is there and I start to feel emotionally very vulnerable and very like aware of whatever's in the moment that's right in front of me that's both good and bad and that is one of the gifts of natural number one and so this phenomena that I got to experience was how we literally can experience walking a mile in someone else's shoes when we learn how to embrace the inner center of leadership and do the physiological movements that are associated with each 
So the super quick rundown, one is the chin, and they are all about awe and wonder and beauty. Mm-hmm. Two is in the solar plexus area. Basically, it's the, the, the bottom ribs, the top two abs. Uh, and they are all about connection immediately in the moment, and they can handle anyone's intensity. Great connectors, sparkly eyes when they engage. Threes are all about joy. They're the collarbone, and they're the only number that activates with the smile. So when they have a really big, straight smile, they get these beautiful smile lines, their collarbones mm-hmm. lift up, and they exude joy in the world. They are literally here to like create joy and energy for other people, which is super needed. I really need a three in my life <laughs> to just sit by me all the time. Uh, fours, they need the eye contact, but they also close their eyes and go deep within because they're the bottom of the body. Uh, they're literally the the root and sacral chakras. Mm-hmm. If you're familiar with that area, it's called the Dantian. That is the natural number four center. So you'll see them fold their hands and put them on their low belly a lot because that's what it what comfort feels like to them. And they drop in and they retrieve beautifully ancestral wisdom and deep inner knowing of our emotions. Fives are the top of the head. They have a beautiful framework of the world. They also have a direct connection to source or whatever you want to call it. Uh, But they they hold the framework. They hold the framework for life. They are great systems people. uh, And they love to help. They love to help and make things easier for others. Sixes are the chest. They literally lift. They always have a good lift in the chest. Uh, (laughs) There's so many cute things about sixes. I have several sixes in my life that I love. Uh, Susan, who has studied this information, um, she's a six. They tend to have very intense eyes uh, and these cute sort of jowly low cheeks. And they're all about what's alive in the moment and how do I lead the community in front of me to the, the best place for us all to go. Super important in leadership. Sevens are the forehead or the third eye, and they are the visionaries. They are holding the vision of everything that's possible for us and how we as, as humankind can be better. And that's really important. Eights are the, um, the sacrum, the bottom of the spine. They root down into the earth. They're the only natural number that when you say, all right, let's ground and center. We're, a huge buzzword in the mindfulness community, ground and center, right? Only an eight actually knows what that means because they actually have that immediate connection to root into the earth. Everyone else, we kind of have to learn <laughs> what that means. Right, right. Uh, and eights are beautiful space holders. And then nines, which is the center of the shoulder blades, um we hold the vision of the interconnectedness of literally everything so we hold all of the eight other numbers together in community we hold everyone accountable for their impact on one another uh and we hold the big vision in a similar way to seven uh but a little bit more inclusive of everything not just the possibilities of being better so that is a quick 101 and you can't take a personality quiz for it. Cause again, all of us, one of my favorite examples is I had a client who really, really, he wanted to be a natural number two Cause he thought that's the best number to be, <laughs> which were, they're all great numbers to be. We're all great. Let's be so clear. But he got yeah. in his head. He was like, I want to be a two. And he heard himself in the description of two because yeah, he can connect with anybody and he can be with them and he can handle some intensity but he turned out to be a natural number one. So he's more about honoring the person in front of him. And once he heard the description, he's like, oh, okay, yeah, that that fits. <laughs> and natural number ones are prone to shame. So he was in that comparison mode. Like, I want to be that this is the right answer. And if I'm not this, then that would be bad. And so it's just such a, I love the system because as opposed to, let's say, astrology or human design, you can kind of understand all of the other physiological types of people in mm-hmm. an afternoon as opposed to having to study it for, you know, years sometimes. Mm-hmm. Astrology is so complicated. <laughs> so accurate, though. I there's just It like is. Parts of it that are like, hmm. And I do take those personality tests, too. And I always forget. I... I remember the um, Myers-Briggs because I always screw it up. I think I'm an ENJT, but I think it's ENTJ. ENTJ, yes. Yeah. (laughs) I am an INFJ for anyone who was following along with that. (laughs) And I think I'm probably a six in your body. 
I mean, just looking at your face and and what you do, right? I feel like a lot of podcasters love uh, our sixes because they love just following the thread that's alive in the moment and just being mm-hmm. with the conversation. So it's entirely possible um, that you are. I, I can ask you some more questions today and maybe do some movement. <laughs> Uh, okay, I'm open. <laughs> so yeah, what do you want to go ahead and, and just do that first? Yeah, let's do that. I yeah, think that might be kind of interesting. If you I don't know how much you can scoot back so I can actually see your body because it's even harder online than it is mm-hmm. in person. But if you can sort of turn sideways to your camera like this, as I knock my background a little bit, and just take a nice deep breath for me. I'm just gonna watch what happens. Yeah, you have a nice big lift in your chest when you breathe there. So if you breathe up again and feel your chest lift and then just exhale and let your shoulders drop and keep your chest lifted. Is it easy for you to keep your chest lifted after that inhale? Not necessarily. Not necessarily, yeah. It would be much easier if I could be in person with you and put my hands on you and and push because the test for six is we bring our hands up to about this level Mm -hmm. and we're trying to catch the energy from the other person right here in the chest so there's almost this circuit that creates in the sixth chest where they can feel the energy in front of them in in their heart center Mm -hmm. does that sound like you yeah and yeah when i'm talking to people it's it's definitely there's energy between us yeah you feel that literally Mm -hmm. the circuit between and so when you are, if you're just sitting, um, you're hanging out, you're w- around other people, but maybe, do you have a hobby you like to do to just kind of like unwind? Sometimes I crochet. <laughs> that's so funny because a lot of sixes, I know that's what they do. And if they're disrupted, if you're disrupted in the middle of that, what does that feel like for you? Um, well, it depends on on what I'm doing. Sometimes if I'm working on a project, I, I like to finish things that I start. I, it's really annoying to me to have to like, let something go and then go do something else and then come back to it. Yeah. It's a skill I've had to develop. Yeah. That, I mean, again, I cannot, uh, I am not qualified to automatically type people online. Like my mentor mentors are, I can Mm -hmm. do it in person now because I can feel the energy of the person. Um, but six is very likely for you just looking at your face and the quality of your, the way your eyes look. Sixes mm-hmm. do have a, uh, they can have an intensity in their eyes when they're paying attention because they're really like they're taking in the information that's alive in front of them and they're really receiving it instead of like you're, you're not receiving this information and smiling. Notice that, right? You're just sort of, yeah. like, okay, I'm taking it in and you're, you're literally taking it in. Um, And these are the kinds of things that we look for when we're typing people is, you know, what's happening with their eyes? Are they doing something with their face? Like even, again, like I said, nines, if we're really, really paying attention, obviously, whenever I'm live or I'm talking with somebody, I put facial expressions on Mm -hmm. because I've learned to do that. But I know when I was younger, this got missed construed all the time because if I'm really paying attention it literally looks like I'm dead inside (laughs) because I'm soft I'm receptive I'm taking literally the whole universe in so my face doesn't it's like what's going on here right Right. whereas two if they're paying attention to you their cheeks are up their eyes are sparkling they're looking at you they're like yeah and we can learn to activate all other eight numbers in our body and when we do that we start to understand on a far deeper level how different people experience things differently it makes us more curious and less likely to judge things through our perspective because we understand literally and physically oh there are different ways to see literally different ways to see the world um i love in the community there's another healer that's a part of the body of nine community and she and I talk a lot about the natural number being your filter system, right? So going back to what I was, we were talking about, I work with someone's spirit with their energy, right? Mm-hmm. Your spirit, your energy is housed in a body. 
And this body filters everything that comes at you here physically on earth. So I love that I have this tool that just by, and it's part of what I do in my um, soul sugar coaching package. When you sign up with me as a client and you work with me in soul sugar, one of the first things we do is we go get you identified. What is your body vessel? What is your filter system? Because then I now have like a six month shortcut. I can now shave off six months of work that every other practitioner out there has to get to know you so fundamentally to even begin understanding your perspective. This gives us a framework that we can immediately apply. Okay, do I need to give you deep honoring eye contact? Do I just need to show up with you? Do we need to smile a lot at each other? <laughs> do we need to close our eyes and go in and like retrieve that soul-based information more? Do I need to understand your framework and help you understand where your framework might be rigid and you're struggling to break free from it? Do I need to just go with what's alive in the moment for you? Because if I try to derail that, you're going to want to pounce and you're going to feel really misunderstood and upset. Do I need to, to know that I cannot say no to you? Because no is going to be a massive fundamental trigger. Natural number sevens do not hear no. They only hear there's another possibility of yes. I need to find the other yes. So I'm just going to work with a seven to find their yes. We're not even going to go towards no. Eight, I really just need to go at their pace. I cannot push them at all. I just need to go at their pace and honor the wisdom of their body. I need to get them in their body to get that wisdom. And for a nine, I know we're working with such a massive big picture that they're going to get caught in fear and freeze more than any other person that's going to sit across from me. So how do I get them in their breath so their body can thaw? That is a whole lot of information right there just by knowing one through nine that if I know what you are sitting in front of me, we can go a lot deeper, a lot quicker. And so that's why that is like number one thing I do with my clients now is let's get you identified in body of nine so that I know what natural number we're working with. What is your body? How is your body filtering everything we're going to do? And then we can dive into a work a lot quicker. And it's so powerful. So powerful. This has been incredible. Before I met you, I had never even heard of this. And it's like when I found out what um, love gifts were, how mm -hmm. love languages were, mm -hmm. fundamentally changed my relationships with yes. everybody I ever met. It's Absolutely. like all you have to do is figure out what their love language is and mirror it for them. And you're going to have a great connection. Knowing what their body language is, is just like. If you mirror it back, everybody I'm sure has a natural number that they're, mm -hmm. they, they live in. It's easy for them, right. but if you can understand all of the other types and you can recognize it when you're talking to someone, mm -hmm. it makes having a conversation with them so much easier because you just know where they are. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. Oh, it wow. changed, it changed my relationships. It's changed my relationships with my family, with my partners, with my friends. Mm -hmm. It's created so much more cohesive community because it's such a cool thing to walk into a space and be able to say, what's your natural number? And someone be able to say, oh, I'm a three. And then you just know, oh, okay, well, what lights you up? Like, let's go. And like, you can get that, that conversation going so much quicker and get so much deeper because you just know how again how is their body informing their experience here on this planet not even including the trauma right this is your nature mm -hmm. and that's that's a lot of what we study in this is this is your natural state of body being in this world and then we just get nurture 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 trauma piled on top and this is this is a way to really get to the core of who you are so much more quickly and I have to say, they always say, once you have your natural number identified, sleep on it because you wake up the new, the next morning. And if we got it right, you go, oh, here I am. Hello. That was my experience. Like I was, I was in a book project is how I uh, came to find out about this. And Susan was one of the other authors in the book and she 
offered to give us all our natural number. We all got on a Zoom call. She made us do some funny movements. I wiggled my shoulders about like this and she goes, okay. And we sat down and she started describing natural number nine to me. And I went, how does this strange lady on the internet know this about me? And it was because she was able to witness my physiological body for Mm -hmm. what it was underneath all of the experiences piled on top. And then over the next six months, it was like my whole world changed. And within a year after being identified, I'd made the choice to leave my therapy career and be bigger and bolder, knowing that fear is my Achilles heel even more intimately than ever before. But I could see it finally in a new way that I couldn't see it before. It was really, really transformative. So I'm super thrilled that I get to bring that magic to other people now and in what I'm doing with Body of Nine and what I'm doing with my one-on-one coaching in Soul Sugar, and we're just educating my brand, Living Luna. We're just about literally uplifting the others. So not just uplifting the marginalized, but uplifting the other natural numbers, the other eight that we are not, to understand and you know promote understanding and curiosity between one another. Yeah, curiosity is one of those words that more than any other word I think out there, it has the power to heal the world. It does. You know, people talk about love, but I think curiosity is is much better. If you can just be curious, not hold judgment, just, hmm, how does that work for you? How, tell me about that. Why, why do you think that is? Just asking the questions and, and letting people give you information. It's just like, yes, receive information from other people instead of applying our own lens immediately. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really appreciate this. So how do you work with people? I said, this was going to be all about you. (laughs) And then we just went again. Good conversations just flow. I have appreciated this conversation. So yes, a little bit more about me and what I do specifically. So I am the CEO of our brand, Living Luna. uh, And like I said, our mission is uplifting the others of the world. So we're a collective of service providers, including therapists and coaches and other types of healing. We have a community. We have a podcast. Everything Living Luna is, is us. And again, this is Luna as in the moon, L-U-N-A, because Luna is an acronym that stands for loving, unashamed, and nurturing authenticity. We want to nurture people's authentic self rather than, again, that sort of nurture of trauma and piling on top of the nature. So I personally see only a very small number of clients. I have two signature um, appointment types that people can sign up for. If they just want to work with me very briefly, they want to dip in, they want a blueprint reading, or they want to meet their guides, or they want to do a reawakening ritual. So I do these little rituals to just reawaken you to your soul's energy and purpose. Much more powerful if we know your natural number. When you work with me ongoing, that is through my Soul Sugar offering, and this is a intensive three-month deep dive into all that you are naturally so that we can get to know your stories that are keeping you from accessing that, your energy leaks, start taking aligned actions together, really meeting your personal needs and getting you back in a better self-care relationship. So as a part of that, I do a breakthrough blueprint session uh, where we talk about your natural number, we get to know your energy signature, all kinds of fun stuff. I just love like, let me get to know you. I want to know your blueprint because they're so fascinating. Um, And then we have an ongoing coaching relationship for about three months where we are diving deep into who you are and what you want to be in the world, clearing out energy blockages. And walking away with some sort of plan so you can keep honoring who you are in the world in a really, really powerful way. Um, And I apply my seasons framework in that, which people can find out more about on my website if they are so inclined. So, And what's the website link again? Yeah. So I have two major websites. One is the Living Luna brand. So that is livingluna's.com. So 
plural, just add an S to Luna, livinglunas.com, and then my first name, safriana.com, so S-A-F-R-I-A-N-N-A.com, and that has all of the personal offerings I do, as well as links to our blogs, our our, uh, podcast. We try to put a lot of free resources out there for people to be able to do some self-development work, to get curious about themselves, to learn about body of nine, to learn about blueprints, to learn about energy. Like I'm just kind of constantly trying to give back. Uh, But yes, there are absolutely ways to work with me one-on-one if you feel so inclined. That is awesome. So what's the one thing you want to leave the audience with today? Well, I really hope that if you listen to this today, you're more curious about humanity than ever before. And that you get curious about yourself. If I had not had the experiences of trauma or parents or teachers or whoever authority figure telling me what to be and who to be and how to be, what would I be? Who would I be? You have those answers within you. You don't actually need anyone else to tell you them. You don't even need me. Like, you don't have to work with me as a coach. You can find those answers. But a lot of us have so much dog piled on top. We need that outside help. And there is nothing wrong with having someone assist you in uncovering who you really are. You're in there. Promise. You're magic and we need you. And we need you. Do yes. You. Every Do the work. <laughs> every single one of us. Thank you so much for joining me today, Safriana. This has been amazing. Absolutely. Thank you. I I truly believe we all rise together. Thank you so much for tuning in to another empowering episode of the You World Order Showcase podcast. We hope you've enjoyed hearing from our incredible life, health, and transformational coaches who are making a profound impact on the world. Remember, change begins with you, and you have the power to transform your life and the lives of others. If you want to take that next step and unlock your true potential, visit thecoachesalchemist.com where you can find the three ways we can help you for free to spin your talent into gold with clarity, a system, and a plan. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you never miss an inspiring episode. And if you enjoyed today's show, we'd greatly appreciate it if you could leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform. Your feedback means the world to us and helps us reach more people with our positive message. Stay connected with us on social media for updates, behind-the-scenes content, and upcoming guest announcements. You can find us on Facebook at The You World Order or simply visit thecoachesalchemist.com. 